Hey guys, welcome to the course. I am super excited to be teaching this and to be sharing all this information with you. So in this first preview lecture, we're gonna go over all of the subjects that we're gonna touch on, what to expect from the course and how you should use the course to get the most out of it. After we go over the topics that we're gonna cover, then we're gonna cover course format. That's where we're gonna talk about how the course works, how you should follow it, what sections you should focus on first. So let's just go section by section. I'll tell you what we're gonna go over and tell you what to expect. So now the first section is actually targeted towards people who are still on the fence about starting a mobile app development business. So that section is gonna focus on bigger contextual understanding. We're gonna cover things that would motivate you to get into the game sooner and teach you what you should expect. So in the first section, we're gonna cover things like seven of my favorite reasons why you should start a mobile app development company. We're gonna cover my story here at Sprint Kick, and I'm gonna let you in on the trials and tribulations of everything that I went through to get it from where it was four years ago to where it is today. Today, we've created over 40 full-sized professional mobile applications, and I'm gonna show you everything we learned and everything that we stumbled over. Now, section two is where we're officially going to start. We're gonna cover some things that help you understand how mobile ecosystems work, give you some basic knowledge that you're gonna to need to be successful, and we're gonna prime you to understand what business decisions you're gonna to have to make and how you should strategize um, and position yourself to capture the most clients. In section two, we're gonna cover a lot of options. We're gonna talk about different ways that mobile studios have developed themselves um, and what are the options and the paths that you can take. We're gonna talk about things like the startup timeline. How do mobile app businesses start? What do they look like? What do they look like when they're finally growing? And what does the in destination look like. I'm gonna to try to impart you with some knowledge that will help you go through the good times and the bad times. We're gonna cover some broad technical details to help you understand how iOS and Android applications are made. We're gonna talk about generally how do production cycles work with mobile app studios. We're even gonna cover how you should tackle this if you are a programmer and how you should tackle this if you're actually not. In section three, we're gonna start talking about strategy. What's the best strategy that makes you the most money? What's the best strategy that's tailored to you and what you wanna get out of this business? We're gonna talk about subcontracting strategies. How do you design one? How do you execute it? How do you decide if you even want one? We're gonna talk about things like, do you specialize or do you generalize? We're gonna talk about picking niches, whether or not that's something that's gonna suit you um, and whether or not it's something that you should pursue. We're gonna talk about things like the dilemma of good, fast, and cheap, and other dynamics that you need to understand to be successful in your business. Now in section four, we're actually gonna dive in and start getting our hands dirty. We're gonna start covering how you can get the best possible web presence up for as little as $19. So in that section, we're gonna cover how to present yourself the best online, how to build a web presence that impresses your clients and entices them to contact you. And we're gonna focus on cheap and easy ways to get off the ground sooner rather than later. We're gonna take an in-depth look at some of the other popular mobile studios and we're gonna to try to break down what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. We're gonna to try to figure out what lessons we can learn from that and what we can impart on your business. At the very end of it, we're gonna talk about some cool strategies for getting better design done, um, for upping your web presence and how to do that very, very cheaply. In that section, we're even gonna talk about picking the right name, what it says about you and how you should go about picking it. So in section five, we're gonna start talking about building a subcontracting strategy. A subcontracting strategy is going to be essential for you if you wanna expand your business, but also be able to take on clients as soon as possible. We're gonna cover the big three platforms for finding freelancers, Upwork, Elance, and Freelancer. Um, and I'm gonna try to impart to you all the knowledge that I've accumulated from using these for almost nine years now. By the end of this, you should be an expert at these platforms. You'll know exactly how to get the most out of them and how to cut out the fat and skip the things that don't matter. We're also gonna go over alternative ways of finding good partners. And we're also gonna talk about what makes a good partner for your mobile application business. We'll cover ways of finding them, vetting them, and picking them. 
Now in section six, we're gonna cover something that is essential to running any online freelance business, your portfolio. We're gonna talk about the easiest ways of putting together a portfolio. We're gonna talk about some tricks and some hacks that a lot of people are not taking advantage of that can put you ahead of the game very early. We're gonna talk about the problems of putting together a portfolio, what you should shoot for, and what are some of the mobile specific issues that you face when putting together a portfolio that's designed to impress. So at this point in the course, you are ready to go. You have a presence, you have a portfolio, you know your strategy and you know your messaging. So in section seven, we're gonna cover 12 different unique strategies for going out there and finding profitable clients. I handpick these strategies because I know they work. These are strategies we use here every day at Sprint Kick to bring in more and more clients. Some of these strategies are the basics that you've heard before and some of these are really unique strategies that no one else will tell you. In each lecture, we're gonna dive into, and I'm gonna show you how you can do it, not just talk generally, how you can execute on it. Now in section eight, we're gonna cover another part of the process that is essential. Now that you've found clients, how do you lock them in and how do you start getting paid for your work? So section eight covers proposals, how you should go about building a proposal, what should go in it, what should not go in it, and what does each element of a proposal say about you that you're not even thinking about? We're gonna cover some cool ways of getting them done cheaply and easily, and then we're gonna cover some cool tools for upping your game and making your proposals really, really slick. We're even gonna take the hood off the car and show you exactly what we do here at Sprint Kick, and I'm gonna show you some real estimates we use to show you exactly our kind of winning formula that has won us a lot of clients. Now, after you've gotten some clients, closed the deal and started making money, section nine is gonna cover how you can manage your clientele, keep them happy, and keep them bringing in more business to you. We're gonna talk about tone, we're gonna talk about distance, we're gonna talk about how to use jargon effectively, we're gonna talk about the things that clients hate and the things that clients subconsciously need but will never tell you. The point of this section is to teach you how to keep your clients happy, but more importantly, keep you happy at the same time. It's gonna give you perspective on how to pick the clients that are gonna help you grow, but also help you be happy with your business. Now in section 10, I'm gonna to pull together a ton of information on best practices for running your mobile business. We're gonna cover everything you need to know to go from an amateur to an expert in running a mobile app business. We're gonna cover things like what is agile development, how important are budgets, how you can sniff out budgets before the client even tells you. We're gonna talk about things like how to price yourself efficiently and how to optimize your price over time. We're gonna talk about things like how do you respond to competition and how much does it actually matter? We're gonna talk about things like how to run a meeting, how to meet your client in person, how to pitch yourself effectively. We're also gonna talk extensively about all the things you should avoid in your business that could blow up and cause problems in the future. Okay, then towards the end in section 11, we're gonna cover some internal management tools that can help you effectively run your projects. We're gonna cover Asana, Trello, and Google Docs, and I'm gonna show you how you can effectively integrate this into your process flow and dramatically increase your project success. I'm gonna show you specific ways that you can use these tools, not only as an internal management tool, but also as a way to keep clients in the loop and show them your progress. Then at the very end, we just have a lot of free resources. There's a lot of contracts that you can use that are designed for you to just pick them up and insert your information. Those are contracts that I spent a lot of money on, but for you, they're completely free and you shouldn't have to worry about it. Okay, quickly, the course format, it's really quite simple. All of the course lectures are divided between talking heads like I'm doing right now and then uh, screencasts. In general, I suggest that you follow the course in a linear fashion as in one lecture after the other, one section after the other. It's really up to you. You can hop around if you want to. If you start a lecture and you think that you already know the information, totally fine to just skip towards the end. At the end of every section, I have PowerPoints that are attached that are summary. So you can always check it over to see if you missed anything. Some lectures are designed to be for the beginner and some of them are going to be more advanced. But to make it easy, at the very beginning of all the lectures, I'll let you know if this is something for beginners and you should skip it if you're someone who knows a little bit about this to begin with. Okay, I hope you're excited to start the course. I am too. I'll see you in the next lecture.